So this week's episode of Oscar Lost in Space was a very exciting episode, despite a good chunk of this appearing to be, you know, the swimsuit, the fan service, the simplistic episode of the series. But then by the end of the episode, you end up with a gun pulled to another character's head all within the same crew. And you're like, oh, this episode had a lot more going on than just simple fun times on a beach. Now, caught me a conspiracy theorist, but I honestly don't think Ugar is the so-called traitor that they've been looking for, the one who sabotaged them on their ship and made it so they couldn't communicate back home. I still firmly believe that that's a different character who probably did so because they didn't want to return home. However, the whole reason for pulling a gun, it seems to be quite personal and nothing that Ugar actually knew about until the name drop and learning about the politician name and the connection with the kid, and that's why he finally pulled the gun and said, don't move. I firmly believe that that's the reason this all occurred. But from the other characters' perspectives, of course, they're going to obviously assume this is the traitor we've been looking for. And the reason I say this is he's very shocked to learn about the last name of one of our characters and piecing it together that either, you know, a mortal enemy of this politician or is somehow connected to him, or maybe he really just doesn't like this person. And I think it's quite interesting how he's had this gun that he found on the ship, which the ship is like a hundred years older, so of course it's obvious why they would find things that they no longer have in their current time, and why he would keep it around because, as far as he knows, any one of these people could be his enemy, and it's best to have something to protect yourself in this situation. So it'll be interesting to see the direction they want to go, because there's no way he's pulling that trigger. I really, really doubt he's going to pull the trigger, because not only would it end his life, because they'd all surround him, probably leave him on the island and go away after kind of mourning the dead, or they're going to come to some form of agreement through character development, which is what I think is the likely scenario, but I'm pretty excited to see more, because, you know, you don't get too many situations where you can pull a gun on one of your main characters and say, okay, cliffhanger time let's see how they're gonna leave the island now so I quite like that but the interesting thing is how that wasn't even the only threat in this episode to our characters every episode up to this point has given them a threat on the planet that they're on whether it be nature whether it be just the wildlife or just something they can't even explain but no it is a threat to them. However, the threat in this episode wasn't actually on the island until the end of the episode. It was actually the stuff happening back home with their parents. All of their parents, except Ari's mother, is saying, we can't give up, we have to keep figuring this out. They obviously didn't drown, they're probably in space, but every single one except Ari's mother is saying it's the logical outcome. They're probably dead and we have to basically confirm that with the government and just kind of move on. Every one of their parents except Ari's mother seems okay with just giving up on their children. Hell, you're seeing politicians give the same blunt, just bland, emotionless comment about how it hurts them from the inside and they're all saying the same thing. I really don't doubt if every single one of these parents could be in on the plan of getting rid of their kids and somehow Ares got wrapped up into a scheme that was going to kill their kids. This is more conspiracy stuff I know, or they're just bad parents, which honestly could be a likely scenario as we are seeing, such as Yoon's mom, who is this like famous singer, probably just thought, oh, even though my daughter has a good voice, she's nowhere near my quality and I can't hurt my image, so I'm basically going to treat her like a dog and keep her in a kennel. Like, they all are bad parents in their own way, just based on their dialogue. Sure, you can have a logical kind of response and maybe not want to show the emotions to just strangers around you, but I would think in this situation where everyone's going through the same thing as you, if you really did care about your kid and, you know, they very much are about to be confirmed dead, most people would be fighting with the government to say, we need the funding, let's check space, they can't be dead, look at the logic. But everyone except Ari's mother is saying, nah, they're dead, we have to move on. No one cares. So that's why I'm sort of believing that there could be something planned about like an assassination, get rid of their kids because for one reason or another they didn't like them, or they are just simply bad parents, which also could be a likely scenario. Kind of the same way with Ugar being, you know, he could be the traitor who sabotaged the communication, but at the same time, with how shocked he was to learn the last name, it kind of feels to me like this is just something personal that happened on the moment and he wasn't planning to do this, but now that he knows who he is, it's clear that he has some, you know, feelings he's got to work out and it'll be interesting to see where next week's episode wants to go. But nonetheless, I thought, it was a fascinating episode, despite having so much fan service and just simplistic moments, it was actually one of the more intense episodes, both with their parents seemingly giving up and making it so they really do have to get home because no help is coming to them. You can clearly see how distraught Ari's mother is and just, you know, please be safe. 
and you see that she was recording her messages and no longer is she getting those messages but you know Aries is still keeping the diary so if she does get back home I'd be interested if her mother does kind of walk through those diaries with her but then you also have the stuff going on with Ugar and just the gun and just all the characters seemingly thinking they found the traitor but at the same time did they or is this just something that happened kind of spontaneous because there's something very personal going on and that's kind of the exciting thing about Ostra Lost in Space is how they keep finding new ways Luca could easily end up dead next week but at the same time easily couldn't it's so interesting that you have so many routes that this show could go in and they would honestly work you could kill Luca and that would be an interesting motivation you could leave Luca alive and have great character growth but still have the uncertainty of who the traitor could be or maybe he is the traitor you have all the stuff going on back home were they a part of them getting lost in space or kind of attempted to be killed or is this something that's just kind of you know they're just bad parents and this is probably a blessing to them minus Ares mother of course so it's kind of interesting just how many routes this could go back with their home as well as just the whole space exploration. I'm pretty excited to see where it's going to go. This episode was actually the best planet they will probably ever go to, even better than their own home. The natural kind of evolution of things with just the whole wildlife and how they basically breed and things like that. All of the, it's like fruit and just, you know, it's paradise. This is literally where people would want to go on a vacation. So I thought it was kind of fun because these characters you know, they're feeling like they're back home. Actually, it feels better than when they're back home and characters like Kittery are kind of getting just freaked out being like, why are we so happy? We were supposed to be fearful. We are fighting for our lives and this feels like paradise. Let's never leave home as I get my suntan. I thought it was kind of fun seeing it because this was the most gorgeous visuals we've seen for a planet. Just look at it. It's paradise. The water, the way it would glisten and sparkle, all of just the wildlife that we'd see, the birds, and just it felt like you wanted to go on a vacation here. And I thought it was so fun just seeing the characters because even though this was the fan service section of the episode you know you have characters such as Ares as well as Kittery just talking about are they revealing themselves a little too much they got big breasts you know it's going to lure the boys and how they would have these conversation being like yeah but you also do that and you know Kittery be like no I'm just sexy there was a little bit of comedy there but for the most part you know what the anime was doing it was very much focusing on characters chess their ass or just the chess in the case of the male characters but at the end of the day I thought it did provide some simplistic almost high school moments where these characters are very much becoming a close group of friends I guess minus Ugar of course at the end of the episode so they almost are becoming family and this is what you would naturally expect if high school characters went on a paradise vacation where they had water and just you know bathing suits things like that this is kind of the stuff they would naturally discuss so it's not even that it was like jarring because for the planet they're on it does make sense and you did have characters recognize like why are we feeling so safe we are supposed to be terrified for our lives so it was almost like a fourth wall breaking moment at least for me and I quite enjoyed that but when it did come to the whole like romance aspect when they're like on the ship kind of discussing who likes who you know we have Kittery who likes Zack and then of course we have Ares who likes our boy Kanata and just I love that stuff because that's just like simplistic stuff. It's nothing revolutionary, but I think it was very cute and adorable to see how they both couldn't hide their true feelings and how that ultimately ended up with Ares confronting Kanata. And Kanata, I love this man. He is so dense. He basically is saying, of course, I'm super popular. I'm popular with everyone. Okay, do you have a long-term girlfriend? Of course, everyone's my girlfriend. This man is just, he's too pure for his own good, and I love how it just really bothers Ares, who clearly likes him. It's super just, you know, high school nonsense, but I found that to be pretty adorable. And because these characters have actually grown into a pretty close-knit group of family and friends, I thought that was pretty adorable just to have that more human approach. So as they are trying to travel back home, as they are fighting for their lives, when you're on a paradise like this, it's obvious why those kind of deep-rooted emotions of love would start kind of spring up and you'd start questioning well I do like this man and if I do like him and he is you know this hot if he's this popular I gotta say my feelings now so he doesn't go back to another girl and then it just kind of all goes out the window because he's so clueless it's very simple it's stuff you see in pretty much any anime revolving around high school characters the swimsuits the love of who likes who but I felt like it was very charming and for the most part with the way they presented there was a couple of shots where I was rolling my eyes and be like okay yeah 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 let's get to the next scene but for the most part the overall dialogue was just humorous it was cute it's just fun seeing characters like these who just started off so distant and just so not friendly and not on good terms we got to know these characters we know why they're opening up we understand why Yoon is cutting her hair and actually kind of not hiding her face away 
she's feeling safe as most of these characters are, which is why I'm very confident in the fact that Ugar is not going to pull the trigger, why he's not going to get kicked off the crew. He could, don't get me wrong, if that's happening. I'm not saying it couldn't happen. It just feels like the direction they're going, they want all these characters to end up back home for one reason or another, and to show that they're all going to overcome whatever is holding them down currently, and maybe that will transition to a better life when they do get back home on their planet. That's at least the direction I think they're heading. And even though this was technically the fan service episode of the season, I still found this to be an incredibly gripping episode, both on the written and just overall directed level. The planet was gorgeous. I love the stuff back home and just the whole, like, everyone seemingly is giving up except one parent. But, I mean, at the same time, even if that parent seems distraught, hell, they could throw a curveball and make her the most corrupted and twisted parent at the end of the day. This is a series that has so much going on both back at home but also in space. We just haven't had a lot of time to focus back on their Earth. And it's fun seeing where they're ultimately going, and I just love the idea that so many possibilities could happen next week and in future episodes, and either one would honestly work for me, and I'm pretty excited to see where it's going to go. But for everyone who did watch episode 5 of Astra Lost in Space, theory, speculation, where do you think next week is going to go? Do you think Ugar is the full-on traitor, or are you on my side saying he's not the full-on traitor, he just has some personal motivation going on? Let me know down in the comment section below. If you did enjoy this video, though, be sure to drop a like, and also hit that subscribe button if you have to be new. So until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.